and welcome back to another video from Auto Social UK. Back in 2016, when Jaguar launched the F-Pace, it was considered a bit of a risk for Jaguar to release an SUV. But since that time, it's become the Jaguar's fastest selling product, selling nearly quarter of a million worldwide. And it's easy to see why. This car offers so much practicality, but still has that classic, really timeless Jaguar styling. If you like new car reviews and you're just finding my channel now, then please don't forget to go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I'd love to have you join me on my channel. Okay, let's get into the rest of the video. The Jaguar F-Pace has had a well-needed revamp for 2021. The exterior already looked great, however, they've just had some design tweaks which has elevated it further. They've also made some changes on the interior which have made a huge amount of difference, which I'll go into later. Starting off with the bonnet, this has now a much more aggressive hump and also on the previous car it used to have a bonnet shut around here which was a little bit unsightly, however they've now brought it forward and it has a much more sleeker seamless design. As you can see the bonnet does also overhang the light slightly and gives it a more aggressive look, you know like a race me face, you know like Okay, that wasn't the best race face, but you get what I'm trying to say. They also have some redesigned front headlights, which now feature a double J. On the previous cars, they just had a singular J, and these look really good. This car is actually fitted with the black pack, which is around 650 pounds, but completely changes the style of the car. You've got a black front grille, you've also got the black surround of these air vents, and also a black gloss front splitter. In my opinion, this is the best view of the Jaguar F-Pace. It really does look sleek and stylish. Unfortunately, that black pack might be quite good value for money at £615, but if you also wanted privacy glass, that's going to cost you a further £415. Around the back, the design changes have continued and you no longer have some physical tailpipes because Jaguar want to come across as a much cleaner brand. After all, they say that they're going to be completely electric by 2025. You've also got some redesigned rear lights which have been taken from the Jaguar I-Pace. Convenience is key with an SUV and the R-Dynamic SE does come standard with an electric tailgate. The F-Pace's boot boasts 613 litres, which is bigger than the Macan's and only 20 litres smaller than you'll find in the Porsche Cayenne from the class above. The facelift has also brought a new engine lineup, including three diesels, ranging from 161 brake horsepower to the car that I have today, which gets 204 brake horsepower, to a three litre six cylinder with 296 brake horsepower. There's also three petrols in all, including a plug-in hybrid. Most of the engines, other than the plug-in, are also now mildly electrified. Inside of the F-Pace is where we've seen the most change, and it's showcased by this 11.4-inch touchscreen. Now, previously, the system in the Jaguar F-Pace was a little lacking. It was slightly laggy, and it was just lacking in all the equipment that you get in modern cars. However, this system is completely different. So this is actually the PIVI Pro system that you get in the new Land Rover Defender and it really is a great system. It's super crisp, as you can see I've got the 3D map showing at the moment. You've also got all of your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as you'd expect, but you've also got the 360 degree cameras which really are quite fancy and especially for when parking with such large wheels these are really handy to make sure that you can zoom in and you're not going to hit any of those alloys. Despite the fact that this screen has been chemically strengthened and also has a dual coating of anti-glare to reduce fingerprints, you do still get a lot of fingerprints, so you're going to want to keep a little cloth in the car to always be wiping it clean. Jaguar say that the new system on this PIVI Pro 2.0 means that everything, up to 90% of it, is found with just two clicks away, and it is a lot quicker and more responsive. 
the interior quality of the Jaguar F-Pace has also improved sufficiently. You've got lots of new materials, including a lot of this chrome, almost steel feel, which I really like. There's a really good weight to the paddles, which is really enjoyable. You've also got some steel across the center console, mixed in with some levers. Of course, you've got some really nice soft levers across the dash and on the steering wheel. But if you delve a little bit deeper, then you do start to find some scratchy plastic, but at least it's hidden. One thing I found a little bit strange and it took some getting used to is when you first see this little screen at the bottom here, it looks like it should be touch sensitive. However, I was prodding at all of these buttons and nothing was really happening. I thought it was broken. But after talking to Jaguar, they're actually touch sensitive. So you have to apply some pressure. Once you apply some pressure, it will bring up all of your settings. You also will need to twiddle these dials to change your temperature, but pull them out to change your fan speed, which I think if you don't have that explained to you, it might be a little bit difficult to find. The car doesn't come standard with an electric sunroof and you have two options. You can have a standard sunroof or you can have this one, which is electronically sliding. Now this is a 1,600 pound option, but I definitely think it's worth having, especially when you have the dark headlining. It just brings a lot of light into the cabin and makes it feel a lot more spacious. So what has changed about the new F-Pace? Well, mainly they've scrapped a few options. So you can no longer get the entry level rear wheel drive. They're all now four wheel drive. And you also can no longer get the manual gearbox. They're all fitted with the eight speed ZF gearbox. As I mentioned previously, the car that I'm driving is fitted with the D200 engine, which is a two litre four cylinder turbocharged diesel, producing 204 brake horsepower. Now this car seems to have a little bit of a split personality because when I was first driving it at low speeds, it felt a little bit underwhelming. There didn't seem to be much power beneath my right foot, but that's because I wasn't applying it particularly strongly. As soon as you are a bit firmer with that right foot, the car just completely changes its personality. It goes from being a really soft kind of quiet car to quite an aggressive car that deals really good with your inputs. My only advice is that if you are gonna pick a car, I probably wouldn't go for the entry level diesel engine. It has around 150 brake horsepower and I just don't think it would be enough to lug such a large car. Because every version is now fitted with four wheel drive, this is sure to help in slippery conditions. Should you find yourself in a grass car park or wintry weather? And while the F-Pace isn't really meant for off-road driving, Jaguar have been able to borrow a lot of know-how from sister brand Land Rover. Still, the Jaguar's limited road clearance, large alloy wheels and sporty tires mean that the Discovery Sport is probably gonna be a better bet if you live somewhere really rugged. Despite the fact that all of the cars are now fitted with a four-wheel drive system, the Jaguar F-Pace won't use that unless it feels like the extra grip is needed. Most of the time, it's gonna behave like a rear-wheel drive car, although 100% of the car's power can be sent to the front wheels if needed. The development work that Jaguar have performed on the F-Pace's suspension has definitely paid off. As potholes and poor road surfaces are noticeably smoothed out, it also grips exceptionally well with a satisfying precision to the turn-in and decent feedback through the wheel. Of course, it's not the most extreme on the rails SUV that you can buy, but it's also not overly soft. It's just a beautifully assured all-rounder. Both this Jaguar F-Pace and also the XF scored really highly in the NCAP independent crash testing and that's mostly due to the strong bodywork and also the whole host of safety equipment that's on offer. Those include things like traffic sign recognition, lane departure warning and autonomous emergency braking. The F-Pace also makes a pretty good tow vehicle. It can tow up to 2,400 kilograms, which is about enough for a large caravan, although that will reduce to 2,000 if you go for the plug-in P400E model. Once again, Jaguar blow me away with just how timeless, but also modern and exciting their cars can be. And all things considered, when you compare this to some of the competitors, I think it's great value for money. 
And talking about competitors, Jaguar, Marshall, Ipswich want me to invite you to an event on the 3rd of June where they're going to have all of their competitor cars to pin against their Jaguars just to prove to you why you should buy a Jaguar. So if you've been considering between certain brands, then why not get down to that event and test them all at the same time? I'll pop the details in the description box. If you've enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a massive thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye.